Believe it or not, this is a class two e-bike. It was sent to me by Himaway for evaluation. It's called the Escape and it's the first moped style e-bike I've ever ridden. Before riding the Escape, I was skeptical about the idea of building an e-bike to look like a moped, but not giving it the power of the moped or the top speed of a moped. However, I now absolutely get their appeal. The too long didn't watch is that the Himaway Escape gives you a lot of the comfort and the looks of an electric moped without the headache of licensing and registration that can come in some areas for an actual moped. It's capable of over 20 miles of throttle only riding, climbing hills, and it's much more capable on unpaved trails than I ever would have guessed. The Himaway Escape is a moped style class two e-bike. Its 92 pound overall weight matches its beefy looks, complete with mag wheels, large seat, rear rack, and a battery swallowing down tube. That beefiness also contributes to a relatively high maximum rider weight of 330 pounds, making the Escape a good choice for heavier riders. The 48 volt, 14 amp hour lithium battery is integrated into the frame. It's removable for added security or for charging, though a water resistant charge port means you can charge the battery without removing it from the bike. Himaway promotes the Escape as trail worthy and the four inch wide Kenda Crusades help with that. They wrap 20 inch alloy wheels that give the Escape a low standover height plus more torque to the ground than you'll find on the 26 inch wheeled Himaway Cruiser. They sit under large polymer fenders front and rear that help keep you dry both on and off pavement. The rear swing arm suspension is dampened by two coilover shocks. Much like the coilovers you'll find on a standard moped, they're adjustable for preload with the use of of a spanner wrench. The front Springer fork is also adjustable for preload, complete with lockout if you're looking to maximize riding efficiency over comfort. The hub motor sustains 750 watts per class two e-bike regulations, but after extensive testing, I can tell you that it peaks significantly higher than that. I couldn't find any published figures, but my educated guess is that it's somewhere just north of the thousand watt peak found on other e-bikes with a similar motor. The broad seat is actually supplied by Velo, a company known for making comfortable OEM bike saddles. It's sized for one rider to make room for the cargo rack behind it. High rise bars house a control pad and bell on the left and a half twist throttle and Shimano Torni thumb shifter on the right. The Shimano Altus derailleur shifts the KMC chain across seven speeds, each of which will be much appreciated when a rider decides to provide some or all of the power. A bright LED headlight lights up the road and trail at night with a tail light functioning as a brake light anytime the brake levers are pulled. Those levers squeeze fully hydraulic Tektra Aries calipers onto 180 millimeter rotors. A heavy duty aluminum kickstand rounds out the package so you can park the Escape anywhere you need to without having to find a rack. The Escape comes mostly assembled with a toolkit, though I did find I needed an extra wrench to hold some nuts in place as I tighten things together. Total assembly took me about 30 minutes. I discovered on my short test ride that both tires had slipped off their beads, which can happen with the shallow lips of cast wheels. It's impossible to know if it happened at the factory or during shipping because the air pressure is intentionally low to prevent rupturing the tubes. The rear derailleur also needed the barrel adjuster to be fully reset in order to get clean shifts. This didn't require any tools, but if you don't know how to do it, following a YouTube video on how to adjust a derailleur is very helpful. All that said, any competent bike shop can assemble an escape as well as take care of the issues that I've found with this one. The Himaway Escape looks like a moped, but it is a class two e-bike. That said, I think most people interested in this are probably interested in using it as an electric moped. The nice thing about it actually being a class two e-bike in places like North Carolina, you don't have to register, you don't have to get insurance for it, you don't have to put turn signals on it because if it were truly a moped, if it were capable of doing more than 20 miles per hour on throttle or pedal assist, then it would be a little bit more complicated for me to get this out on the road. But for this first part of the test, I'm just gonna use it on pavement, throttle about 75% of the time, There'll be some times where I'm actually pedaling along with it to help it up steeper grades, but mainly because there are times where I'm gonna be on sidewalk and 
I just think it's a, a bad look to be riding an e-bike throttle only <laughs> on a sidewalk. But for now, I'm enjoying riding along on this relatively flat road at 22 miles per hour. I've done a lot of testing on this loop, and one of the things that I actually find pretty funny is how much extra room cars give me riding this on the road than they give me when I'm riding anything that looks like a bike. See, look at that, look at all that room they gave me. That's super nice. I'm five foot eight with a 30 inch inseam. And I'm about 195 pounds right now. And the rear suspension is made up of two coilover shocks. You can actually adjust the preload in the springs. I have it all the way soft in the back. You can also adjust the preload in the fork. I also have that all the way soft and it's nice for little things like that and it's nice for things like that. The seating position is fun. I, this is crazy fun. I don't like pedaling in it, but I don't mind riding along like this with my legs level and sitting on something that's a lot broader than a bicycle seat. It's padded with foam. It's got an adequate amount of padding, although if you're gonna spend a lot of time in the saddle, you might find it's a little firm up to pedal assist level five and actually pedal to help get through this intersection. And that got me up to 22 miles an hour pretty fast. The motor is a 750 watt motor, same as in the Himaway Cruiser, but it actually puts more torque to ground because it's got 20 inch wheels. The human gearing is also the same, which also means that you can put more human torque to the ground, but you run out of gearing a lot more quickly. In seventh gear, I'm kind of topping out around 18, 19 miles an hour, at which point I'm pedaling a little faster than I want to. The nice thing about this actually being classified as a bicycle is that you can use bike lanes like this. If this were actually a moped, this would be unlawful for me here. But this gives me a couple more feet away from bumpers, away from mirrors as cars pass me. Makes them a little less frustrated that I'm here too. The throttle is a half twist throttle. And to me, it's very easy to treat it like cruise control by twisting it all the way and then just repositioning my grip on the handlebars. I don't have to squeeze that tightly. It holds the throttle wide open. And I don't really get any additional hand fatigue over just what I'd get from riding. The tires are four inch wide Kenda Crusades. They're actually my favorite multi-surface tire. They've got good knobs for when you're off pavement, but they're not that noisy when you're on pavement. I'll use them down to 10 PSI for off pavement use on, on multi-trail bikes. I run them at 25 PSI for pavement because that gives me a good balance of compliance when going over bumps, nice grip even in the rain, but a lot less rolling resistance than if I had them down the 10 PSI, which means I'm gonna get more range out of this battery. One of the things about this not being built like a regular bike is that you tend to feel all of the impact in your seat, both the literal seat and figuratively <laughs> your seat, the seat of your pants. This rides about like a moped in the back. It doesn't have the same kind of suspension that you would get on a motorcycle, but it takes a lot of the edge off of impacts from cracks in the road, Little things like that can be a little much for the suspension to absorb. That's fine though. You're not gonna get better on an actual moped though. I'll tell you, I was not expecting how much fun this was gonna be to ride on pavement like a moped. I never owned a moped. And I don't think you look very cool riding one, <laughs> but it doesn't matter because it is crazy fun. Another nice thing about this being a class two e-bike is that it's legal here 
to ride this on the sidewalk. Pedestrians have right of way. And I think that you would have some issue with law enforcement if you rode like an idiot, pedestrians are not. So I will not be riding like an idiot. But this road right here is a major road and it is just way too busy to be riding this out there. I tell you, the suspension is really good at going over all these expansion joints in the sidewalk. It's a relatively smooth ride. So while technically this is a bike, it doesn't pedal like a bike at all. It is not fun to pedal. I'm five foot eight, 30 inch inseam, and I feel pretty cramped trying to get these pedals around. I'm actually very glad to have a motor to do some of the work because my knees are so bent up that if I push hard enough, I could really feel it in my <laughs> knees. But because the gearing is so low, I still can get decent power to the ground even though my pedal stroke isn't nearly as efficient as it could be. Pedaling the escape isn't super horrible. It's not painful in any way, but if you're gonna be doing the kind of riding where you will be pedaling a lot, I think something like the Cruiser would be a much better choice because then you could adjust the seat and get proper leg extension. You'll be able to more efficiently put your human power to the ground, but also it's just gonna be better for your joints than this. But that seating position that makes pedaling this so hard is why this is so much fun to ride. 28, 29, 31, 33 miles an hour. And this thing is tracking straight and true. Feels just fine. I'm getting about 22 miles of mostly throttle riding in this hilly area of Raleigh. And so I think Himaway's claims of 20 miles of range on just throttle is probably on a conservative side. If you're gonna do any pedaling whatsoever, you're gonna get more range. If it's flat where you are, you're gonna get more range. Himaway didn't just make this for pavement though. <laughs> they absolutely promote this as a trail bike, which I had to test to believe, but wait until you see how capable this is in places like the state park that's right over there. So Himaway actually promotes this as a trail e-bike, and we're gonna put that to the test. I'm certainly gonna get a lot of funny looks riding this out here. These hydraulic brakes are fantastic for coming down a hill like this. And yeah, the suspension is okay. It is taking a lot of the, the rough stuff out. But as I said in my street test, the, uh, the rear suspension is still pretty stiff, even though I've got it as loose as it goes. It's riding like this where you're really gonna notice the speed based pedal assist. So I've got it at pedal assist two. That doesn't mean that it's weak because if I slow down, it'll get the full power going to the motor to try to get me up to, which I think is about 16 miles an hour is pedal assist level two. But I'm still only going about 14, 15 miles an hour right now because that's where wind resistance and rolling resistance of these fat tires is keeping me because the motor power tapers off as you get close to the speed. And this is, okay, so pedal assist level one wants to get me to 11 miles an hour and I don't want to be there because I'm coming up on some runners. So I've got to go power on, power off, power on, power off. Good morning. Yeah, even cornering and the loose stuff. The Kenda Crusades are great tires. 
They're they're perfect for riding like this. It's fantastic. Oh yeah, this this suspension is fine for this. Yeah, it's not like a dual suspension mountain bike by any stretch, but it does ride very comfortably over bumps and, and ditches like that. So if you're familiar with my other reviews of trail capable bikes, you notice this section a lot where I'm flying through it. I'm not gonna fly through that area or this turn or anything with a bike that weighs this much and such an odd seating position, but it's capable of doing it. That's the thing. This is really surprising me with its off-road capabilities. Same thing with this section, you got the whoops. Ha! Still very fun, but I'm going about five miles an hour slower than I usually do. Oh, but it climbs this little thing easy. I'm pedaling, but I'm not doing any of the work. <laughs> okay. Ah, oh, easy day. <laughs> I'm not even in first gear, that's third gear. Level two pedal assist, down to second gear to come up. This, this is a steep one. Oh, zero issues. Easy day. It's actually, <laughs> level two is too fast because it's trying to get me over 15 miles an hour. And as I said, speed-based pedal assist is gonna give you full power when you need it, when you slow down. It just tapers off as it gets to a certain speed. And pedal assist level one seems to taper off around 11 miles an hour. Ah, oh, this thing is a billy goat. I am shocked at how great this is at climbing because of its weight. <laughs> it's super fun. This is not the bike that I would buy to dedicate to this kind of riding. It just isn't. I like to pedal a lot more. I like to get a workout when I'm riding. But if this is what you're getting for commuting, for doing mostly throttle only riding on pavement, <laughs> you're absolutely gonna be able to weekend this at the state park where e-bikes are allowed. I think that's fantastic. I, re I, am, I am thoroughly surprised at how fun this is here. If you're watching this video because you're thinking about getting an escape, I hope I've given you a lot better idea about its capabilities than I ever got just from looking at it and reading its specs on paper. It turned out to be a lot more fun and a lot more versatile than I ever would have guessed. At $1,800, it is a lot less expensive than an actual electric moped, but it still gives people a lot of what they're looking for in a moped without the additional legal hassle that can come along with owning them. If you're interested in buying an Escape or any Hemaway e-bike for yourself, please place your order using the link in the video description. It supports the channel when you do. Be sure to subscribe for more e-bike videos. I really appreciate you watching the Tech of Tech, and I hope to see you next time.